Yeah, or you can pos think positive. I think there was even Norman Vincent Peale's uh, The Power of Positive Thinking, and so on and so forth. Um, just as a basic stepping stone idea, when people were just starting to get into spirituality, you know, when you talk about the positive, it's, it is people's inroads into peace of mind. When they talk about positive thinking, they're talking about peace of mind and joy and love and happiness. You know, live each day in, on a, in a positive attitude, a positive note. So it has a general connotation. Uh, there was a movie called What the Bleep Do We Know, a quantum physics movie, and they had a former theologian on there, Michael Ledwith, who's one of my Facebook friends, and and basically he said most of the time though when, when people get into positive thinking, it's just like a, a smear, he called it, over a lot of negativity. So oftentimes when people talk about positive thinking, they talk about affirmations and so forth. And the deeper you go into spirituality, when you go much deeper, you start to realize that 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 to use mantras or uh, positive sayings or positive affirmations without getting down underneath at what's going on in consciousness is a bit like like putting uh, sweet icing on a cake of mud. Uh, you know, if we want to use kind of a graphic analogy, so that if you just tasted the top of the cake, it could be quite tasty and sweet. If you actually dug your finger down just a little bit, ugh, you would have a muddy mess on your hands with a little uh, sweet icing mixed in between. So, um, I was actually in, uh, in, the, in Sandy's house in the bathroom where I was saying it, staying in, basically there was a little handwritten note on the window about uh, you know, your, your task is, is not to seek for love, but to find and remove all the obstacles to the awareness of, of love's presence. Everything that you've built against love has to be exposed and released. And in that sense, you can say that any authentic spiritual path that takes you inward toward the light is more a journey through the darkness to the light. Or what a lot of times in Eastern teachings and spirituality, they'll, they'll call it negation. You basically, instead of affirming all is one, God is love, I am the light, and so on and so forth, it's more of exposing everything that you've built against that state of awareness, which is natural. So it's not like you have to do anything to bring the light in. The light's already in there. It's, it's already who you are. The light is lit. It's the veils of, of false beliefs that have been drawn over the light that, that are blocking the light from awareness. So in one sense, even in the East, they have a, a saying called neti neti, not this, not that. It's very much emptying the mind of everything that's, that's believed to be real. And, you know, the Buddha called that going into the void. Uh, Jesus has a lot of, uh, of teachings along the same lines. Uh, probably the most, the most prominent one is in Lesson 189 of the workbook. You know, where he says, simply do this, be still, lay aside all thoughts of what you are, what God is. Uh, you know, he's basically saying, empty your mind. It sounds very Buddhist when you start reading that, that paragraph. Hold on to nothing. Do not bring with you one thought, the past is taught, one thought before of anything. Forget this world, forget this course and come with holy empty hands unto your God. It's a beautiful passage of just emptying your mind of all of the false concepts and beliefs that are there. And I remember the first time I read that paragraph, I just felt this deep, my heart chords were just going very strong, like this is really the essence of the teaching. That's where the, you might say the essence of Buddhism and the essence of A Course in Miracles really come together in that sense of emptying the mind. And then, you start to see where's Buddhism with, 
we you know advocate a lot of um, a lot of meditation. Uh, of course, the miracles really brings in that aspect of relationship, the mirroring that goes on. And so, in that context, we could say that that this emptying can be accelerated through relationship, which is a little bit different than traditional pathways, which basically say, you know, go off to the mountain, go in the cave, mm -hmm. pull away as many distractions as you can so that you can face the distractions in your mind, these thoughts uh, that, that are called by many different names in different traditions. Uh, like in 12-step programs, they call it the stinking thinking. You know, they'll use phrases like, oh, I used to be a drunk, but now I'm a dry drunk. And people say, what do you mean a dry drunk? You're not drinking. And they said, I still have the stinking thinking. You know, it's all authentic spiritual paths eventually work down to the thoughts and the beliefs and away from the behaviors, because behavior is really just effects. And as difficult as behavioral change can seem to be in this world, it seems to be even more difficult to, to change your thinking and to literally take on a whole new thought system. So, swinging back to your original question about the power of positive thinking and, and what my views are on that, it's, it's very much that as you go much, much, much deeper, you realize that the ego set up a dualistic world a dualistic thought system and a thought system of opposites to cover over the truth of being, the truth of pure oneness. So in that sense, the positive and the negative, <coughs> the opposites of the world, were set up as a trick. And so oftentimes when people just kind of skim the surface of spirituality and they try to put on a happy face, and try to, okay, I'm going to think positively, it may seem to work, it may have some general benefits uh, from that effort, but then they usually face like a wall of something that they really weren't prepared for. This like dark, unconscious guilt that's under the surface of this positive and the negative. And in that sense, I advocate, as you go much deeper, as you really have to empty your mind of the positive and the negative in that sense. All of the compliments and the criticisms are actually both part of a defense mechanism against the pure truth that's underneath them. 